Alrighty, this is Jesus with People News. Okay, and the reason why I'm breaking this up is for my benefit to uh, research piece by piece by piece. Okay, um, not for y'all's, but for mine. But you know, sometimes uh, you know, sitting there 35 minutes listening to a court case, some people do not want to do this. And again, this is for my benefit, not for anybody else's. So I interrupt to be able to uh, check out both cases. Hear his full story and what my ejection was. Both have pulled that jurisdiction somehow. Um, Mrs. Howell was the one that cheated. That came out during not only this um, trial that we went to twice with two separate individuals. Um, and she's trying to allege that I'm the one that perpetrated all of these court hearings when in fact it's her who followed through and perpetrated all of these court hearings. Um, the court and the DA um, tacked on a domestic violence allegation and obstruction of a peace officer charge. And while they unlawfully held me in jail under the initial arrest for 26 days, they added this felony trespass charge that was dismissed. So this is all under Mrs. Howell's um, recommendations to the court and to the DA's office. I'm not here recommending that the court uh, impose all these um, unconstitutional... Now, let's pause there for a second. We all know that officers uh, trump up charges to try to get some type of uh, court thing. Uh, look at how often this has happened on cop watchers, First Amendment watchers, and all this kind of stuff. So officers actually do do, do this. Now, that being said, when uh, the, sorry about that, phone's ringing. Courts do this, especially to the people that actually represent themselves because they think we're a bunch of dum dums. Um, fines and fees against me, that would be ignorant. Um, the courts then imposed an Eighth Amendment violating um, excessive bail of $50,000 cash only on the bond, in which uh, until that went before your court, that was a cash only bond, and then you changed it to a cash assurity um, or property bond. And um, it's also shown on record in the body cam footage that was shown by the sheriff's deputies uh, during the trial that they violated my Fourth Amendment right by entering my house without a proper warrant uh, The courts violated uh, this court violated my Second Amendment right by s issuing a sworn statement and putting my name on the CBI and NCIS database so that I could not purchase the firearms Despite not having been charged with any crime the DA's office uh, ruined the last 15 months of my life having to deal with this matter along with mrs. Howell who again uh, everybody wants to say she is a victim of this matter when the house, which was premarital, which would have came out had the trespassing charge not been dismissed frivolously, uh, I should say it was frivolously put on and then dismissed by the DA because they knew they could not substantiate a trespass charge for me being inside my house. Um, this, uh, the court again, after the DA's office was unprepared in June, violated my Sixth Amendment right to a speedy trial. The DA was unsuccessful at trial, and the court and the DA should have released, at that point, the Eighth Amendment violating bond. Instead, they maintained it. And even after the DA dropped the frivolous trespass charge, they still, last week, asked the court to maintain the cruel and unusual Eighth Amendment violating excessive bail on the unlawful misdemeanor charge, which the court was going to maintain until I had voiced out their false and fraudulent motives, enough that the court's clerk um, or bailiff had informed the court that I was correct and that the unconstitutional bail should have been released after the trial back in October. Instead, all parties continued the civil rights violations. This is an extreme violation of Title 42 United States Code 1986, Action for Neglect to Prevent, which states that every person who having knowledge that any wrong conspired to be done and mentioned in Section 1985 of this title are about to commit and having power to prevent or aid 
in preventing the commission of the same neglects or refuses so to do if such wrongful act be committed shall be liable to the party injured which would be me or his legal representation for all damages caused by such wrongful act which such person by reasonable diligence could have prevented and such damages may be recovered in an action on the case and any number of persons guilty of such wrongful neglect or refusal may be joined as defendants in the action and if the death of any party be caused by any such wrongful act and neglect the legal representative representatives of the deceased shall have such action therefore and may recover not exceeding five thousand dollars damages therein and for the benefit of the widow of the deceased if there be one and if there be no widow then the benefit of the next of kin of the deceased but no action under the provisions of this section shall be sustained which is commenced within one year after cause of action has occurred after hearing all of this and knowing that i had been unlawfully detained illegally held in jail i believe that after 15 months of having to deal with this which i've asked it to be dismissed and which mrs howell continues to file cases in kansas and in the state of colorado through both this criminal matter and the divorce case that i've been going through for over almost four years now in which i'm going to be filing with the federal um the the united states supreme court um after everything that has been imposed against me, um, and also furthermore, me not being a citizen of the United States and being an American state national, I reserve all of my rights at all times and in all places, and I waive no rights at any time nor in any place. Any imposition of a statutory sentence does not apply to non-U.S. citizens. Furthermore, the breach of trust that this court and the DA has uh tried against me by violating your appointed trustee duties um, and having allowed all of these actions to happen under false and fraudulent means should nullify any order of the court as again all of what the DA and the court has been doing uh, is against their fiduciary duties and is a violation of title 42 United States Code 1986 action for neglect to prevent if anything in the court should be if anything the court should be providing restitution and ordering reasonable attorney fees for me for having to deal deal with this matter not only for an excessive amount of time but because i had to even deal with it at all that being my house which would have came out during the trespass um trial had it gone to trial but the da had to drop that because it was frivolous they could not continue on after they had already tried to tack on a trespass charge after the fact which is why my the bondsman only had a burglary f3 charge which we proved i proved to the court last week during the pre-trial readiness so i think that they are their their word is not um what's the word i'm looking for um it it's it, all they're trying to do is is make it sound like uh, I'm the one that has the issue and I'm the one that has the problem. When I've proved throughout the entire case and the entire matter and the entire trial and the whole entire time that I'm not the one that is perpetrating or pushing or pursuing these these frivolous matters and charges. Emily Howell in Kansas is, again, not a resident of the state of Colorado, who is a U.S. citizen under your jurisdiction, but me being not a U.S. citizen and an American state national, not under this court's jurisdiction, which I've already established several times under common law that the court doesn't care about, um, this matter should be dismissed and dropped, all of it. We're gonna pause there so we can get some type of understanding of what just happened, right? Um, statutes, quote unquote, rules and regulations, is actually created for, um, really what it's supposed to be created for, is for the government employees. <coughs> Excuse me. By, uh, like Congress, they create uh, other entities. 
Well, they create statues for these entities um, to go by. But because you are U.S. citizens, they are claiming that U.S. citizens are employees, which gives uh, jurisdiction over you because you waived your rights to be really American. And uh, you you want to stay in the, uh, the realm of the United States Corporation, which is titled, uh, I believe it's 28 U.S.C. 3002, um, Section 15A. And it specifically says the United States is a corporation. And U.S. citizen is agreeing to be in that... Uh, federal realm of statutes, cool, statutes, codes, rules, and regulations. Uh, because y'all, think about this. We are a common law country. Why are these courts not recognizing common law if we're a common law country? Why are they going by statutes? Why is the Supreme Court going by statutes? The, the Supreme Court is the 904s hate constitutional areas. They always go by the statues. Just saying. Sorry. Okay. Mr. Anderson, is that it? Uh, that, that's all I have for right now. Unless... Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, I've considered uh, the jury trial... I've considered the one conviction, which is on the level two misdemeanor violation of the protection order. I'm assuming you're not asking for restitution on that issue. That's correct. Okay. Um, I've considered the statement from Ms. Howell. I've considered the statements from uh, the people as well as Mr. Anderson's statement. Um, my primary concern here is that this has been reduced to a very low level uh, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Anderson, for whatever reason, disagrees with this court's jurisdiction, disagrees with what's happened, disagrees with anything on a going forward basis, and I see absolutely no benefit in supervised probation. We will be back here for a violation of probation inside of no time, which is a waste of court resources. Uh, and a waste of the people's time, certainly a waste of my time, and unfortunately a waste of uh, the victim's time, and frankly, Mr. Anderson's time. So, what I'm going to do... We're going to stop right there, because we're going to go to the next one. But to used to leave you guys off with, right? The courts never said how they have jurisdiction, because the word to get out, right? Uh, I have st uh, jurisdiction because you waived your rights be American, and instead staying as a U.S. citizen. So therefore, uh, this is the reason why I have jurisdiction. You decided to be part of the corporation and not as a free man and woman. Is in essence what they're basically saying. They cannot have that on record. Uh, and uh, that being said, if you check out my previous videos, I showed you case laws a Supreme Court's telling these people they must answer if being challenged. And uh, so if you guys don't believe me, go check that out. All right. Uh, everybody's too busy saying U.S. Uh, uh, sovereign citizen crap. And because people are challenged jurisdiction, they're automatically sovereign citizens. No, they're challenged jurisdiction because the Supreme Court says if challenged, they must answer. And we have a right to know Oh, they putting us in the jurisdiction of the United States citizen? U.S. citizen? Or United States uh, Republic? You know, uh, common law? Maritime jurisdiction? Um, we, we have a right to know which jurisdiction they're claiming us to be in. There is so many jurisdictions. Uh, martial law. You know, civil war has never ended. Uh, World War I has never ended. Um, the martial flag is still in every court. Martial law is still in effect today. 
So which jurisdiction we actually are in? And these judges will not tell you, even though their top bosses tell them they must answer. Now, that being said, I'm not an attorney. I'm not giving legal advice. <laughs> All right, it's just my opinion and my research. Okay, and uh, also on my research and hearsay by others that found the same research as I have. Okay, uh, so this is a learning video, no more, no less. <laughs> Had to cover that ass. <laughs> These will be the people news. Bye, y'all.